to Architecting. I'm your host, Angela Mazzi. You made it. This is the landing pad for raw honesty about connecting your career with your purpose. I'm going to give you the tools you need to be an unapologetic advocate for yourself and others, because if you're here, You believe that the space we surround ourselves in matters and you're committed to project by project building a better world for all of us. If you're with me, let's get architecting. Hey, Bright Lights, it's Angela, and thank you for joining me today for this episode of Architecting. As we're in the new year, this is a great time to really take stock, not just on maybe your life as you think about where do you want to be in the coming year, but also of your career. Are you where you want to be? Or are you just putting in time, a lot of it, hoping to get noticed while you're stuffing down your dreams? If this is you, definitely check out my free webinar. I am doing it on Monday, the 31st of January, and there will be a link in the show notes as well as on my webpage, architectingpodcast.com. You're going to want to check this out because we're going to talk about how to fast track your career, not just sit there checking boxes on somebody else's list, doing the things you think you're supposed to do, quote unquote, paying dues, feeling like you're invisible, you're having any of this experience in your career, even if you love your job and love the people that you're working for and with, you still could accelerate your career growth much faster than you are. So we're going to talk about how to take back your time and earn more money, i.e. get the payoff for all of the hard work that you're doing. Wouldn't that be nice, right? Rather than just putting in time, feeling stressed out, being exhausted by all of the demands, let me help you reposition yourself to do more of what you really want to do with your career. The whole reason you got into this in the first place, where you're really excited, your zone of genius taper off some of this busy work or stuff that you're getting just because you're competent at doing it but don't really love it and to really show up as a confident leader instead of that worker bee. If you really are ready to see your career take off and go in the direction you want it to go, you will definitely want to join me for this webinar. It's totally free. And it's just something I am putting in place as we are in the new year just to help us reposition and reframe so that we're asking for the opportunities we want and we're best positioned to have the impactful careers we want and get paid what we deserve for all that hard work. So if that sounds good, make sure you check it out. You can, again, look at the link in the show notes or head over to architectingpodcast.com and sign yourself up for that. You definitely do not want to miss it. I also wanted to let you know that the doors are open for my signature program, Stressless Success. This goes even deeper into how you define success on your terms so that it isn't about being more exhausted, working harder, putting in even more time. Because if that's what we think it takes to be successful, that we have to just deplete ourselves even more and have even more weight on our shoulders, why would we want it? Um, We want success because we want to feel good about what we're doing and that it has an impact and that it's bringing joy to our life. And that is what this course is all about. How to be successful without exhausting yourself or compromising your quality of life. If you want to get the pre-sale price, again, that is also available on my website Check it out, and if it feels like a good fit for you, join us now while you still get that 50% discount. Don't wait till later and pay more. 
Today we are going to talk about a really, really interesting thing. We're going to talk about the difference between an obstacle course and a playground. When you think about when you were little, or even if you take your kids now to playgrounds, right? They're essentially a bunch of things that you have to climb on, or move around, or scale, or whatever, right? So they're kind of like obstacle courses, but kids don't see them that way, right? They see them as fun things to do, as basically a space to have an adventure. And they see the challenge of the different pieces of playground equipment, not the obstacle of it. If we put that into adult terms, we often do view these opportunities as obstacles. And when you view something as an obstacle, you immediately don't feel real excited about it. It's one more thing that's going to take resources from you. It's one more thing that feels hard and heavy and just like, oh, I just can't even deal with it, so it won't. Versus if you view it as something you get to do, not something you have to do, and you have fun with it, much like you would if you were a kid on a playground. You can see how that puts you in a whole different state of mind and a whole different level of energy because now you're excited. Now you want to do it instead of looking at it as, ugh, I just can't even. Gets to an important career skill that I've addressed in other episodes of this podcast, but I keep bringing it forward because it is critical, and that is the ability to reframe. We all have our aspirations, but along with those, we have our own doubts and fears, and it creates a story about what we believe is possible for us, what we believe other people are willing to do for us or accept from us. And if you believe it, it's going to come true. As Henry Ford famously said, you either believe you can or you can't. Either way, you're always right. So if we go into the workplace and we expect that we're not going to be treated fairly or that our clients don't have the best interests of the project at heart or that our boss isn't going to treat us fairly or that certain co-workers are going to be rude to us or dismiss us, whatever that story is, We draw that out. And not only do we draw it out, but the filter that that causes us to put on different situations causes us to interpret things in a way that maybe isn't true and certainly isn't working in our favor. I want to tell you a story about something that happened recently on a project team that I'm on, and I won't name names, but... We had a younger member of the team, who I will say was a woman, have a reaction to how some user group meetings were going. Her interpretation of the project manager, who was a man's behavior, was negative. In her mind, he was interrupting people or saying things that maybe were somewhat sarcastic or dismissive. And I do give her credit that she definitely voiced this concern, didn't let it fester, definitely brought it forward and shared it with me and another colleague. And what was interesting is that neither one of us had this interpretation. We saw the meeting as having gone well, the people in the room as seeing jokes as jokes, and didn't really view any of this as an issue or a problem versus she did. Now, I will say that she was participating remotely versus most of us being in the room, so that's part of it. It's harder to read a room when you're not physically present. 
which is definitely something in our world that is loaded down with virtual meetings, we do have to think about a little bit. You know, somebody who doesn't look engaged or if somebody says something, it's maybe harder to judge how others react to it or how they meant it. But the bigger thing I want to pull out here is not that she was wrong. The things that she noticed were facts. However, she was applying a lens to those facts based on biases that she has as a woman in the workplace that were causing her to feel a lot of discomfort. And that discomfort over time definitely is going to impact how she interacts with the team. It's going to impact what she's willing to bring forward. It's going to impact her attitude. It's not uncommon to have that kind of thing occur where somebody has their own lens and they interpret a situation in a way that matches the story that they're bringing to the table and the story isn't serving them. In this particular example, it was easy to reassure her that the things she was concerned about were actually not the case. However, Most of the time, people don't come forward with their concerns. Because of that, their story begins to build, and they feel like they're collecting more and more evidence to support their story. So then, when they don't feel good about what's going on in their career, they can point to all of this evidence as the reason why. I say this because this is framing your career as an obstacle course. It's creating all of these things that you believe are working against you or testing you, judging your ability to meet that test through a lens of people wanting you or not wanting you to succeed. And in doing that, you're giving away your own power. You're giving away your own ability to direct your career exactly where you want it to go. I'm not going to say that there is no bias in the workplace. I'm not going to say that there is no discrimination issues in workplaces, even if they are unconscious. Equity is a big thing, and it is a legitimate point of focus for all of us to be much more aware, to be much more conscious, to be much more curious so that we are maintaining a dialogue. So don't get me wrong here. I am not dismissing any of that. However, I will say that if our focus is on all the ways that we feel obstacles are being put in our path, whether the obstacles are in the form of opportunities or the way that somebody treats us, or whether or not we're getting the promotion we want, then we're always going to be a victim. We're always going to feel like we are not the ones who are directing our career, but that rather we are at the mercy of others. The danger in doing that is even if you're right, even if someone is in fact a bad actor, you are giving your power to the bad actor. You're letting the bad actor take control of your career instead of you. When you focus on what you really want to get out of an experience and you understand the bigger goals you have for your career, first of all, you are relentless and you take a no matter what attitude. Just like water flows, you can't really stop water from flowing. And as architects, we know so much of our detailing is about keeping unwanted water away because water will find a way, right? Any little crack, crevice, nook, cranny, opening, porosity, it will find a way. So be like the water. Find your way no matter what because you believe in what you're doing and you're clear about what you're doing. Second of all, 
ask for the opportunities that you want. Don't wait for somebody to give you a chance. They may not know what you're interested in. They may not know what capabilities you have. So if you don't ask and you just wait for somebody to read the tea leaves on you and give you some magical opportunity that's a perfect fit for exactly what you want to be doing, you're giving away your power. You're choosing to be passive, not active. I hope you see how that's going to lead more often than not to you not getting what you want, but rather getting what this person believes you're capable of doing, and there may very well not be a match. The third thing about being proactive and not being a victim and seeing the opportunities is to move from defense to offense. Somebody says something that you don't agree with or don't feel right about, you have an opportunity to ask a question about it. So rather than having this emotional response where you feel attacked in some way, you are instead hearing what they're saying and then questioning the parts of it that you either don't agree with or can't make sense of. By doing that, you're reframing the situation for yourself. You're seeing where there are the growth opportunities not where there are limitations being put on you. Because the only one who can put limitations on you is yourself. And I know a lot of times people don't like to hear that and they will come forward with all this evidence of this person said this or that. He mansplained that to me, or I got shut down or interrupted, or nobody asked me, right? You know, that we have all this evidence. And I'm going to say something a little controversial here. I'm going to say, so what? I am going to say, so what? The reason I'm going to say, so what, is you don't have to accept it. You don't have to be defined by it. You don't have to go on a mission to fight against what you don't want. Because when you do that, you're focusing on negative emotions, feeling fear, feeling anger, feeling guilt, feeling shame. You're focusing on situations that are confrontational. You're focusing on seeing the worst intentions in every person's actions. On the other hand, when you focus on what you do want, not that you won't encounter obstacles, just like that kid who wants to climb the monkey bars has to put in the effort to climb, but it's fun. Instead of seeing all the ways you can't do something, you're thinking about all the ways that you can. You're making opportunities for yourself. You're being clear about what you expect out of a situation. And I know a lot of people early in their careers will say, well, that's easy to say if you're a more senior person. It's hard to say when you are in the early years of your career, you're the emerging professional, and it doesn't necessarily feel comfortable to give, a, you know, <laughs> here's my list of expectations to your boss. And again, I want to invite you to reframe that, that it's not about making demands. It's not about fighting. If that's how you feel, that you have to have all these hard talks all the time just to get your needs met, you're still coming at this from the point of view of the obstacle course. You're still finding ways to perpetuate a story where there's a power dynamic. So instead of any of that, think about what you can bring to the table. Think about where you can contribute. If you feel challenged, be creative. Invite other people to participate in a solution with you. Be collaborative. Be inclusive. Because that is how we win people over. This is how we show people what we're capable of doing. This is how we showcase our interests and abilities. This is how we keep communication flowing 
openly and easily is not creating these barriers of us and them where we're always the victim. Because when we feel like the victim, we have to create a perpetrator or perpetrator. So there have to be people that we make the villains in the story no matter what. And we have to find a savior. And when we're looking for that savior in the form of a mentor, a supervisor, whatever that might be, we are saying that that person is the one who has the power, not us. We are saying that that person could rescue us rather than realizing that all along we have the ability to rescue ourselves. We have the ability to claim what we want. And what we want doesn't always mean the end goal. What we want could be the process, the learning, the discovery. It's the opportunity. It is the playground full of wonderful things that will challenge us, but that we get to have fun in the process of mastering each of those pieces. We get to have fun. And the minute it's not fun, you get to challenge why it's not fun. Again, sometimes you may need to walk away. Sometimes you may find you are in a truly toxic situation where your needs are not being met. Still doesn't make you the victim because you're choosing to stay in that situation. You don't have to make that choice. Think about all the ways in your life you are being a victim when you feel like your needs are not being met. And those needs could be needs to develop a certain skill set, needs to feel seen and heard, needs to feel like you are meaningfully contributing and that your ideas are making a difference, all of that. And if your needs are not getting met, the first thing you have to do instead of blaming somebody else or feeling bad about yourself or getting angry is to ask, to ask clearly, to ask without anger, guilt, or shame or any other emotional baggage for the opportunities that you want. If the needs are still not being met, you may be in a situation where the other people involved aren't capable of meeting your needs. Think about it like if you were a bee, right? Bees go flower to flower and they are collecting the nectar from the flower. If a bee visits a flower that's already been depleted of its nectar, the bee is not getting what it wants. What does the bee do? Does the bee attack the flower? Does the bee go on a mission to make the flower wrong? No, the bee just moves on to the next flower. The bee is focused on what it wants, the nectar, not on what it isn't getting in a particular situation. I hope that this helped you to think about situations in your career where you feel like you are in an obstacle course and reframe that to make that obstacle course a playground, to take back your power by realizing that you do not have to engage with perpetrators and there is nobody but you to save you. Not to say that as you work towards saving, you don't ask advice or get counsel, but simply that you realize that nobody else is in charge of your career but you. Get clear on what you want Be willing to communicate what you want. Question with curiosity and playfulness when you hit a challenge rather than letting the challenge spiral you down a negative path. Get the resources you need because being in charge doesn't mean you know everything. It just means you have the power to make different choices, to align with different resources, and stay focused on moving forward with the resources you need. If you're not getting the resources you need, look somewhere else. Don't let the first no be what stops you. Make the no a not yet and keep looking. Thank you so much for joining me today. I know that everybody is super busy and there are a lot of things you can choose to do with your time and I am so happy 
that you've chosen to join me here in architecting. We have a great year up ahead, lots of great opportunities besides the podcast. We have some wonderful interviews coming up here, but also lots of great other learning opportunities. Check out the Architecting LinkedIn page. I have been experimenting with LinkedIn Live. Let me know what you think about that, if that is a good resource for you. I would love to know and make sure that you sign up for my webinar so that you can fast track your career. Don't forget about it. Don't do it later. Do it now. And also, if you like what you're hearing here, remember to like, rate, and review the podcast. It really does help others to find the podcast and to become aware of this resource. So appreciate your support, and I look forward to inspiring you in upcoming episodes. Take care, everyone. for listening. You made it all the way to the end of the episode, which means you are committed to making yourself a priority so you can be empowered to do the work you were called to do in the world. How amazing is that? If you would like even more content just like this, please remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode. I would so appreciate it if you left an honest review too. Hey, I want you to know I'm here for you beyond the boundaries of this podcast. You can follow me on social media at Architecting Podcast or visit architectingpodcast.com to download some great free resources. Take care, everyone, and stay inspired. (laughs) 